Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. I'm just going to do a quick repot. This is the um, I took two orchids into the show to do two separate demos. The fact that it was a gather round the table, I thought, well, people at the back aren't going to see. So if I do one, and then everybody that was at the front can move away, and no, and I'd then do the second one. As it was, there weren't enough people to worry about it. So I only ended up doing one. And then, as I said, I got stuck on that table as the information table with people queuing up with their uh, problems and couldn't get away. So I'm going to repot the other one now. I am currently having new neighbours. I haven't got them because currently their truck is in the gateway, basically, and their men are um, unloading stuff and pumping it around the house. Um, so I haven't met them yet. I will do, I'm sure. Um, but I think it's fair when somebody's moving in to let them get moved in before you start poking your nose in and doing the howdy doody and all that. So, uh, but anyway, the guy who's moving out hasn't yet. I knew he wouldn't. He leaves everything till the last minute. He always has done. Says he's going to do things and never gets around to doing them. So my shed's still got stuff in. It's now got more in than it had before. Because some of the stuff he was supposed to be clearing out this morning, he just put in my shed. The carport, next door's carport, is not clear. It's still got stuff in it. Not a huge amount of stuff. They could probably just about get a car in there. But it's still got stuff in it. You know, yeah, he hasn't cleared up. Um... And I knew that would be it. But he could have made arrangements with them to come back, you know, and do some more. He certainly made arrangements with me to come back and clear my shed out. His expression was, if I'm struggling a bit, is it okay if I come back and clear that out later? And as I didn't even know I had a shed on in the front, I said, yes, that's fine. You know, I don't need the shed. I've managed all this time without it. Anyway, so that's what's going on, and um, I'll just swing this camera down so that you can see what's going on, and we're, this will be one of the fastest repots you've ever seen. <laughs> we won't even be having a break. We won't be having a break because I was doing a repot at a show. I'd already got my clean pot ready, so we won't need a break while I get the pot sorted out. So, basically, this is one of the mini fowls. Um, mini fowl E to be precise. First thing we're going to do is take these spikes off. Um, they're coming to the end of their time anyway. There's a couple of buds here and there. It's not worth keeping them. I'd rather let the plant have a rest and you know give it a fresh start basically. Grow some leaves, get the roots established and um, wait for new spikes as and when. So we'll take those off. out of its pot and if it's anything like the others that I've done no it's not I'm going to say if it's anything like the others I've done there won't be many roots to take off now, this is the first one where there haven't been many roots this is not a very good root system it's got the um, spongy plug in it which I need to tease out but they disintegrate quite easy um, I wonder how long they'd last. That I don't know because I haven't come across this material before. It is a, you know, it's a sort of, it's probably coir or something like that, compressed or whatever. But um, it holds too much water. I mean, this is absolutely sopping wet. Um, but it comes away from the roots quite easily. There's some bark in here as well. But this is out of the mini fowls that I got from Double H. There were eight of them. I've probably repotted most of them now. And this is the worst root system so far. This is not good. It's not atrocious. I mean, I've had plants with worse root systems than this. Nonetheless, it's the worst, worst one. These yellowish roots are because, I believe, the material, that plug, has turned them yellow. That doesn't mean to say they're not functional. 
although I don't know that for sure. But um, that's about as good as it's going to get. Trying not to damage anything because we haven't got that many this time round. I can see a couple of roots that are damaged. I always say if you get a choice don't pot damaged stuff or rotting stuff. Clean it off. Get rid of it. You never know what's, what it's going to cause. So we've got a what looks like an old root there but there's a tiny bit of green on the end of it so we'll leave it. The end of that is non-functional. That's broken halfway up and started to branch so we'll take it back. That one's damaged halfway along. Take it back to there. That's a bad root. Take that out all together. And the one next to it that fell off. That didn't need it. <laughs> didn't need any help. It came off all on its own. That one and that one. They can come off. But that's about it. I think. No, no hang on. We've got some down here. That one's got a rotten end as has that one. That's it. That'll do. So that is not a good root system. Oh hang on, we've got a real manky one there. Got it. Yeah, that'll do. So as I said, this is this is a poor root system and out of the um, ones from double H this is the worst one of the lot. Nonetheless, I've seen worse. And get this in some dry bark. Um, can I? Yeah, I think I will. These little seedling leaves down here, they end up getting buried, and unfortunately, oh, actually you can go in there. They um, they stop the plant getting down in the pot. Now this one, unlike the others, will go deeper in the pot because it hasn't got that many roots and it will just sit like that on the pot and we just pile the bark in get plenty in there sort of right up to the hilt and then just start tapping and watch it all go down in, in between the roots which as there aren't many is um, going to happen pretty easily isn't it and just top up. I don't bother um, pressing down or anything like that with Phalaenopsis. It's not worth it. Quite a large hollow under that leaf. We'll fill that up. And that will nearly do. In fact, it will do. So there we go, no gaps, that's because they weren't, that wasn't a very good root system. Now that will get a good watering. Um, I watered all the other Phalaenopsis this morning and I watered my Cymbidiums and I used my um, Orchid Focus Grow for the first time. Um, and quite honestly it's going to make life a lot easier for me because basically I just used a pipette. Um, which has got markers up the side so I knew roughly how much water I had. So even though it was a bit of a guess, I was quite close. But what I will say is it waxed the pH value down dramatically. So uh, I had to use my um, equivalent of a pH up. It's um, a bit of a trick. It's not, uh, not the genuine article, but it does the job. Well, I'll show you what I use. Get at it off the subject, but that's what I use. It's a nutritional potassium silicate. Um, it's intensely strong. In that pipette, the um, strong mix that I did for the cymbidiums, which was around 600 parts per million, it took it down to 4.6, a pH of 4.6. It took six drips of this, not a squirt, six physical drips came off the end of there with that and that took it up to 6.4. So it's incredibly alkaline that stuff. 
and it whacks the pH back up to a reasonable value with just a few drips. So it works well. Um, okay, so that will now get a good soak and then it won't get touched again until it's um, dry. Mainly because I can't see the roots. I can only see a couple, but at least I can see some. So there we go, that's it. Quick one for today. And um, what is today? Tuesday. Now, I haven't got a clue what else I'm going to be filming for the rest of the week. I'll be uh, winging it, as they say. Anyway, um, I, I'm glad people seem to enjoy the cooking video. That was a spur of the moment thing. I literally got all my stuff ready and I thought, I could stick the camera on the tripod and do a cooking video because I haven't done one for ages and certainly I may have only done one since I've been here. Um, but lots of people seem to enjoy them. That doesn't mean they're going to be a regular feature because I don't cook like that very often because I'm stocking up the freezer. That ended up doing six meals for the freezer and one for me. So, and obviously I don't live off of curry. I probably have maybe one a week, perhaps even less. So, you know, that's, that's going to last me a couple of months, that one lot of cooking. Um, so, you know, I don't do it very often anyway. Anyway, glad you enjoyed it, <laughs> those that did. Um, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for dropping by.